So thank you one and all. We'll go with this uh, slide. So this always I keep, whenever I present, I just keep this slide because it gives me some motivation to do something. So just we'll go through this uh, words uh, given by all these people. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. When educated, we must not forget to educate their actions. Anyone who stops learning is bold, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. The greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young. So this is all well understood. If you just go through this, you will understand that uh, there is no uh, end point for learning. Life, learning is a lifelong process. And we, we ourselves also learn as always. Though I am a professor here, but still I learn many things. And uh, it always gives me, it, it always gives me young by learning new things from, especially from my youngsters and my past students, I learn a lot. So I keep on using this slide uh, repeatedly in all my presentations. So with this small introductory note, well, let us go to the presentation. So I have used a lot of uh, sources. So uh, I am thanking Elsewhere, Willie, Springer, and uh, other website uh, resources through which I have made this presentation. So uh, this all I have taken from different, different uh, online uh, tube, YouTube videos and all these things. So I, I cannot uh, put everything into this picture. So I'm just highlighting few whom I'm very thankful to this. So first of all, we should know what is the need of publication actually. Why, why we should publish? Why we should publish? You all know that the scientific research has evolved over the last 300 years. It's almost 300 years the scientific research has evolved. And publication is being considered as a crucial element for everything. Uh, this mainly, it is mainly used for uh, uh, testing our hypothesis, whether our ideas are correct, whether this idea is uh, acceptable for the global community. In that way, these uh, scientific ideas should be uh, disseminated to the participants. Until unless these ideas are not disseminated or not tested, not criticized, then there is no point of doing research at all. So the first prayer important thing is in any of our scientific activity is dissemination of our ideas. So this is mainly the purpose of sharing our knowledge, sharing of our scholarly uh, materials, our research materials. So this is the main objective. The publication is not just, uh, uh, just to boost our resume. It is mainly to disseminate our findings, mainly to disseminate our knowledge which we had accumulated over the past few years. So uh, uh, it, there is also a belief that until you publish, you are not doing science. There is a, something I believe. Uh, so you, you may be doing a wonderful activity, you are doing a lot of work, but until unless it is not published, then it is, a, it, is, it is not that we are not doing science actually. So therefore, it is very much essential that we need to publish our work. And for academic researchers like us, there is a progression, academic career progression these days is totally based on research papers and grant applications. They, these are all basically become, uh, basically accepted with, uh, with, our, uh, uh, with our paper uh, H index and all these things. So therefore, these are all uh, very important for us to, uh, to work on it. So it basically helps us for academic career progression. And another great thing is it gives us more visibility. For example, Professor introduced me about myself. And in fact, I joined UMP only because of past papers with I did my, with my students at Manit Bhopal. So these are all helping me to create visibility. It's indirectly, somebody is referring to my paper and then they are giving a comments. In fact, we have one participant here, Mr. Uh, Barosh Yadav, some, uh, one guy. In fact, he referred to the paper and said that he would like to collaborate with your work and all. And then he was in touch with me. So like that, it gives a visibility for our work and it also boosts our moral esteem. So then you can probably say that I am author of this paper. And it, it gives a, a kind of self-esteem for yourself it gives a self-esteem for your research group. It also gives a self-esteem for your whole department. It gives for the faculty. At the end, it also gives a esteem for your institution for which you are working. So at the end of the day, it is all about visibility of all this thing. It starts with you yourself first, then your research team, then the faculty, then finally the institution. So it, it gives a self-esteem for all these people. And sometimes these research publications helps you to travel around the world. But of course, with this COVID situation, we are now forced to sit at our home and uh, listen to these kind of stocks. But uh, normally, uh, past a few months, once I joined UMP, every year I used to travel a lot to present my work in the conference and seminars. So like this gives an opportunity to meet people, attract the people. Somebody invites you for a keynote speaker, somebody invites for a talk. So these are all happens because we are, uh, because of a research publication, we are getting a lot of contacts and people invite you. 
so it helps you to travel all over the world and it helps to gain recognition basically let us imagine you are considered as a highly cited researcher by web of science so these are all something which which gives you a kind of a motivation and you become a, a very famous author in you know in a particular year so this indirectly helps you for recognition esteem and it is also helping to for self promotion to some extent and people know who is sudhakar who is trinath or who is vipin or who is uh, professor kumar and so this all uh, it indirectly it is visible to all so in that way it helps for self promotion as well and what is the aim of publication the objective of publication is to disseminate the finding that is a uh, that is a major uh, uh, major work of publication it is not just for boosting our resume and all so first objective of any publication is to disseminate the research finding normally 54% of the uh, contribution goes for uh, for dissemination of the findings second thing is career prospect of course we are all working for a career abroad and then we want to work in a reputed university we want to uh, join in a prestigious institutions those are for all these purpose the career prospects it's contributing and uh, of course for uh, established researchers it helps in research funding normally uh, research for, uh, funders they ask for uh, whether you have a previous past record on this area whether you have published or not so this for these reason we need to have a we need to have a publication and ultimately patent protection and especially for there are some other reasons also just to boost yourself and your self esteem there are so many other reasons for which we publish but the main objective of any paper is dissemination of the research knowledge that contributes to the major share followed by other things which you can look into this slide so now uh, let us start with this now where to start now everybody will be confused how to start a review but i think uh, people are already uh, knowing how to research they know how to start and all it's not a big deal but the person who are new into this field and they just want to start writing papers for them it's really a tough job where to start how to start uh, how to collect the literature for them it's really difficult see i myself when i started my research in uh, nit trichurapalli I, i didn't frankly had any idea about even doing a literature review so my one or two years just passed like that without knowing how to do a research how to search the paper this all is uh, it's normally for any new researcher this happens so uh, let's see how hope we'll address all these uh, queries once we go into the presentation you'll know how to start how to write the paper and how to submit the paper what are the ethical uh, things when you do the paper publication this all will uh, discuss one by one uh, first key key elements of publishing it starts with ethical issues it start with ethical issues because uh, normally research papers are published with your team and normally supervisor is a part of it and the student who contributes a lot maximum work is done by the student he contributes a lot but of course we cannot ignore the contribution of the co researchers who are guiding you and who are advising you how to carry out the research so first we need to address the ethical issues second the style and language of the paper which is very important the structure of the paper the components of the paper and then how do we select the journal for submission and then how the paper undergoes the peer review and all these things so we'll discuss one by one now let us start with the uh, ethical issue regarding ethical issue the first thing is plagiarism so uh, th this is a major uh, uh, problem with these current uh, research uh, people so i i wrote one paper long back during my phd stays uh, days it was something on large scale open algae biomass yield a kind of simulation analysis i could see uh, later on after a couple of years one paper just copying everything line by line ditto just they copied everything only author name is changed and only something is changed and then they published as it is without giving a due credit to the and by somebody and they didn't cite the methodology they didn't cite anything so this kind of uh, copying just exactly what is written by somebody then that is considered a plagiarism and uh, which is which is really uh, damaging the the uh, publication field and the ethics and all this one so we have to be very careful whenever we refer to a paper we should really acknowledge that work and also we try to uh, definitely it's nothing wrong in taking ideas from other work taking a methodology from other work taking a some concepts from other there is no problem at all but we need to do well with the proper citation we need to write those portions with our own language so in that way we can eliminate plagiarism the plagiarism is a very very 
worst uh, thing which we need to avoid and really it can damage the career of revenue as well and it can damage the career of the researcher as well so we need to be very careful whenever we use uh, whenever we take something from uh, another paper let it be a figure let it be a table let be do we copy it we cite it first we cite it we give due acknowledgement we we credit the original source that is how we should start writing any any work you may have got an idea from a paper regarding the methodology but the methodology you would like to use it and test it in your in your place that nothing wrong in that but of course you need to uh, you need to uh, you need to give a due recommend you need to uh, you need to avoid such things by doing all this thing then comes the author listing so this is a major problem with the with the papers so normally who is the first author who is the second author who is the third author and sometimes research is done in a research lab with the four or five people are part of the research work then there is always a problem that who will be the Uh, first author who will be the team who were the this one so this uh, creates a lot of confusion so let let me clarify this the global standard which is normally uh, no, normally is the 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 student who does the major part of the work he is considered always the first author he is always considered the person who is contributing a lot who is doing everything he is the, always the first author and then there are people who are helping in the work in editing or proofreading or maybe for uh, maybe for experimenting maybe for assisting in the modeling work maybe for some other activity if somebody is really helping and then definitely the, the team members can be part of the work and of course the supervisor who is assisting them giving some idea giving them knowledge giving the research work uh, they putting is all of its efforts into this field naturally uh, the 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 supervisors were a part of your work but uh, i unfortunately i see uh, many students uh, many students are struggling whether we should keep the professor name in the paper or not even i i see lot of queries asked in the research gate or in some forum supervisors are not contribute anything do we need to keep their name also into the paper like that such queries are coming so it's really unethical because a professor is taking your time he is giving an idea he is giving all your efforts what research you need to carry out he is giving everything but at the end the at the end of the day you are asking him whether the professor has to be in the paper or not so such uh, kind of thing we should avoid so professor whether he is contributing or not he is always in the paper whether he is because he is guiding you he is taking you he is giving a space to you he is providing the research facility this all so this is a default he is a part of any paper and that uh, he should be included without his consent the paper should not be submitted anywhere and it should be very clear that the research has to be discussed with your professor before submitting and the other authors the team members should be very clear you should you discuss with your team members whether i'm going to include your paper whether what is your contribution how he has helped in the research so in that way we need to clearly discuss with all of us and come to a final version and we agree that these are all part of our team and we are all part of the works so in that way we can uh, we can name the authors we can give the the sequence of authors and uh, in some cases uh, some cases the corresponding author can be the first author also in some cases if if the if the uh, the, the author itself has done the work and he himself want to do it then in some case normally the corresponding author can be the first author itself so it's, it's in many case the research are carried out in group and other things so normally they identify a senior most author or the super research supervisor and normally he used to correspond the paper this is a globally accepted standard and which we need to uh, do it but of course it's not part of a phd research work if it is a part of a grant if many team members are involved then all the team members are part of such uh, such uh, research paper so this is uh, how you need to uh, keep the authors in the research papers then let us come to the review article what is review article basically a review article is an article which summarizes the current state of knowledge on a specific topic it basically summarizes it is like what is happening in the past and what is the current trend in the research we are just basically summarizing and it's not just summarizing alone what we are going to do is we are going to critically analyze this article critically analyze we are going to give a summary of each uh, findings we need to classify it we need to compare it we need to even give the constructive analysis in that way review article is nothing but a critical analysis of existing uh, literature of the uh, on a specific topic 
and it normally relies on already previously published papers previously published data if it's not we are not going to disseminate our data it is just based on the past publications past data we are just going to uh, summarize it and we are going to critically review this uh, work this is how review articles uh, focus is then popularity of review article is basically with the graduate students because the graduate students are in the initial years of their uh, masters or phd and literature review is part of their work to identify the research gap to identify the objective of the work for that for them it's really useful if they start with the review papers because they know what is the existing literature existing and then they can find out what is the research gap from it they can they can clear their objective in that way the review articles are very popular with the graduate students many of the supervisors ask the students to start with the review paper because with the review papers they can come up the they can find out what is the objective and then the research gap can be identified and people sometimes they keep on changing the areas for example uh, somebody worked on energy then they want to do on materials somebody who worked on uh, electrical field they want to switch over to uh, artificial intelligence or neural network or something like that then the, 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 the changes keep on evolving so for that reason when you review the literature you get lot of ideas in uh, going to a new research area so for working on a new research area you need to understand what is done in the past so for that reason uh, this helps actually and then uh, there is a there is one beautiful advantage with the research paper is it, it helps us in boost our citation normally research papers gives more citation than the than the, the re review papers gives more citation than the research papers research papers takes lot of time for citation however the review we can get a quick citation uh, even within one year you will get at least 50 or uh, 60 citations so that is the advantage of uh, publishing a review article and uh, this uh, this specific uh, one is i will be focusing more on the review article first then we'll go for a for a research article the function of the review article what is the function basically the as i told the review article is to organize the literature basically we need to uh, uh, reorganize how uh, this work is done how this work how this work is done so for that we must uh, organize the literature then we can critically evaluate the literature the function is also to evaluate whether this article is addressing this reason whether this article is addressing experimental work whether the article is addressing a modeling work so in that way we can evaluate the article then to identify the patterns and trends what is the recent trends in this particular field what are the new things are coming in the specific area let us say we we are working on a floating solar plant then in that what are the new trends happening what are the new designs coming up what are the new analysis they are doing for a floating solar power plant for example i wrote a, a paper on floating solar plants some five years back even till today the paper is getting a lot of citation and but now there are a lot of advancement already happened in the field so much new designs have come so much analysis method has come at that time there was not even a single method to know the performance of the floating solar system now there are so many softwares available to to predict the performance in that way the, the literature is evolving there are new trends in it so we can identify what is a new trend in it what is a new design in that field so in that way it, it helps to synthesize the literature also ultimately the synthesis of the literature is uh, is also there to identify a research gap and recommend new research areas so ultimately we read a paper there will be a conclusion and every paper addresses a future scope also in that way this research gap the research gap can be identified it can help us to identify the new research areas as well so these are some of the functions of review article and normally uh, i just want to highlight some few characteristics of a good uh, review paper uh, for that it should be a focused review it should only present the present ideas it should report only on the studies that are very very closely related to the topic it should not move away from the topic it should be very specifically deal with the uh, topic i'll give some examples later on but i just want to give some uh, characteristics which we should uh, uh, which we should uh, follow and it should be conscious actually the idea should be presented with less space sometimes i see review papers taking lot of pages maybe they write 100 pages then they write don't know how to squeeze it and how to write it in a concrete manner even they write uh, 300 400 references then very difficult to uh, make it uh, understand actually so sometimes review paper has got its own limitation in, in the number of words and number of references so we have to be very very conscious with what we present with with less space now journal has got its own limitation they don't publish review paper exceeding so therefore the review should be very very conscious it should not be too lengthy it should not be too uh, big also 
then the logic because sometimes i see review papers just it is like uh, uh, it is not having a clear story it is coming with one paragraph suddenly we are talking something else so there is no logical uh, logical progression of the paper it's like uh, watching a movie right a review paper you can sometimes consider like a movie in a movie what happened the, the story should go very smoothly from the beginning to the climax so it follows some sequence so the same way uh, yeah, yeah, your book or your paper should follow a sequence it should be logical we cannot repeat or we cannot uh, change the logic actually it should have a some a story so that is very much important in a good review paper and uh, it should be fully developed so we cannot just uh, leave the story halfway and then uh, we finish we cannot finish the review paper so the review paper should be developed it should have a good story it should be fully finished it cannot be half story left for example we specifically like i say floating solar i just covered the design i never didn't discuss about uh, performance but i wrote something on that also in the abstract so likewise but i didn't cover everything inside the body of the manuscript so then it becomes a half told story so nobody likes to hear a half told story the story should be full form it should be completed actually so therefore the review paper should have a sequence it should have a logic you should be full complete it uh, that is the main thing then integrative your paper should stress how the ideas and the studies are related so we need to focus on a big picture and we cannot simply uh, 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 remove certain ideas actually the idea should be related one idea we are presenting the other idea something different from this idea so in that way uh, we, if you cannot do it we should relate all these ideas and how our studies are different from other studies so it should be integrative you should, your paper should stress how the studies review contribute to your topic and then the current trend in the research that is very much important in review paper normally what happens we try to miss this particular thing we used to write so and so did this long back so and so did this particular work in 1980s or they did in 2002 but we never talk about what is the current trend this will what is today's trend see we, those days we when we talk about printing machine it was 2d printing now we see 3d printing 4d printing so there is a lot of uh, evolution has taken place in the printing field so that therefore our review should focus on what is the current uh, uh, edge on that topic we cannot simply uh, skip this and uh, still we talk about conventional printing techniques and all we need to focus on the new trend therefore uh, though the the past one is still useful for the paper we can still write something on the basics about it but we should primarily focus on what is the current trend in this research that is very much important in a review paper when you start writing a systematic review you need to basically follow this uh, simple rule uh, first is you need to formulate the research question why i write this paper what topic it is being focused Uh, what is the research gap into it? So you need to formulate some few research question, and your review should try to address this research question. The first main important aspect of review is this one. Second is set inclusion or exclusion criteria because when you do a research, the problem is you get n number of literatures. Uh, you, you simply use, uh, search uh, some topic. Let's say I I search something on. Uh, uh, a solar photovoltaic system or i search something on building integrated photovoltaic system i simply google it you will find lot of uh, papers so you don't know whether how to write a review with all these uh, 200 papers or 300 papers so you need to now set a inclusion criteria or exclusion criteria what are the papers i am going to include what are the papers i am going to exclude so you need to fix your own criteria because uh, uh, we cannot just uh, use all the literature and give a, a clumsy review so we, we need to at some point of time we need to fix which is what is the inclusion inclusion is past five years only we included we never go back to the 2015 before 2050 to 2020 alone we wrote we didn't go into the old work so that can be one of the inclusion criteria uh, exclusion criteria inclusion i simply focused only on experimental studies i focus i removed all the modeling papers let's say experimental studies on bipv that's all i want to review only this one so this can be a inclusion criteria so th these are the ways in which you need to uh, you need to set this how many papers you want to remove and how many papers you want to include and then select and assess the literature this is very important what are the literature you are selecting and how you are assessing normally uh, for assessing the literature many sources people are aware simple google scholar then uh, our uh, all the publishers science direct willy inder science uh, taylor and france so many publishers through which we can assess the literature and you can assess through your friends you can assess through uh, colleagues so in that way there are many ways in which you can assess the literature these days it's not a big deal to get the papers uh, what you need 
in fact you mail if you don't even have access to the paper you can simply mail to the professors or mail to the friends and ask any Uh, send this paper, then people are ready to share it. So there is no problem with that. So there is a accessibility of the literature is always there. Assess the quality of the literature, including uh, include in the review. See, normally uh, we need to assess the quality. Uh, that there are some reviews which simply primarily write something and uh, they don't focus on the quality of the work. So you just skip those uh, uh, literatures. Just specifically select the good one and. Uh, basically your review should start from research papers uh, you, you, if you start with a review of existing uh, re, you are writing a review where already a review has been written then there is no point in doing a review paper so basically you need to do a research uh, you need to collect the research work on a specific git and then based on that you start a review so in that way you can assess what is the quality of that work then you need to analyze synthesize and disseminate the finding this is the thing you need to analyze you need to compare you need to synthesize and we are going to dis So this is the purpose of systematic review and most of the review are considered as a systematic review sometimes other than systematic reviews there are uh, there are like uh, articles like uh, 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 there are some other articles where overview is presented without any systematic review sometimes we just present only the idea sometimes we present the concepts there are some other uh, type of reviews but primarily most of the reviews are considered as systematic reviews so let's see uh what is the style of uh, what is the style of review paper as is there is no fixed style for writing a paper there is no fixed formula there is no fixed uh, uh, style each one will have its own style uh, and many of my paper came from my past students and each student has got its own style i will share you with some interesting papers uh, which has got its own style and uh, you will know that uh, the review doesn't have a style actually but still it should have some logic it should have some content let's see what are the content what are the guidelines for uh, for a for a review paper but remember that there is no uh, really a fixed uh, guideline or a fixed formula you can tailor make the review paper according to your own style according to your own uh, uh, your own writing skills so there is no problem with uh, with that normally for a research paper uh, it starts with a title it clearly describes the content as i said the authors is very important you need you should ensure recognition of all the authors abstract is very important it describes what has been done in the work keywords scheme early keywords normally it's around four, four to six keywords it should be correctly identified because it helps in increasing the citation it helps to search your article and it helps in indexing and also therefore keywords are very important introduction is giving the background about the problem and why this work is being taken what is the objective of the work so for that purpose the introduction is very important methods how did you do the how did you collect the data how did you do the experiment how did you analyze the data and what is the procedure you followed so that is how the methods are important sometimes it is written methods sometimes it is written materials and materials and methods sometimes it is also called as methodology so it's up to you how to name this one its introduction methodology and then finally results and discussion the results is how what describes what was discovered actually you did some work you got some uh, did, you got some uh, uh, results you need to uh, discuss these results so what you got and how your results are uh, useful for the uh, new people and you need to really discuss it actually how these uh, results are useful for future uh, people so the implication of the findings is very important and then acknowledgement is very important at the end of the day there are many people who would have helped you uh, the institution is providing you grants so therefore you need to ensure that uh, these are all being uh, these are all being acknowledged and then the references a reference is very important you need to cite the very relevant papers and you need to contribute uh, you need to recognize each and every work which you referred sometimes we have a habit of skipping a particular reference though we use a concept from the paper though we may use a table though we may use the Uh, formula from the paper but we we try to miss it but sometimes it happens with mistake but we should be very clear that we need to cite such papers in our work then at last it comes the appendix where we include the supplemental data some data may not be essential like normal flacher uh, certain uh, data the specification of the plant and other things so the some input data which are used for uh, some simulation and all so these supplemental data we can include in the appendix which are not part of the research paper then comes to the review paper review paper has got following section actually first is the abstract normally the abstract is around 150 to 300 words not more than that sometimes too lengthy there is a word limitation in abstract you cannot write more than 300 words it should be within this limit 
the range normal range is 150 to 300 words uh, even you submit a paper you know it's clearly given a box given if it if it exceeds 150 that you cannot further submit the paper so therefore there is a bad limitation with this word limitation you should convey the entire message of this paper so the abstract should be very very clear it should give a brief summary of your work you you need to stay what are the studies you reviewed and what are the conclusions drawn in that so we need to be very very uh, crystal clear within 150 words you need to tell everything you need to tell what is the summary how did you wrote the paper what is the studies you reviewed and then what are the major conclusions you need to uh, combine all this thing and present it so you should be very 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 uh, clear in that so the word restriction you need to follow and normally we don't cite any references in the abstract we never put a, a reference inside the abstract so this is not right way we should avoid the references in the abstract then comes the introduction uh, introduction is uh, uh, like uh, background of the topic it's normally give a story initial story it is like to give a background about why this topic is chosen why it is important we need to give why this particular work is uh, very much important for this, uh, this one so th these are all the things and also we need to outline the order in which you are going to discuss each topic later on sometimes your literature has got your review paper will have so many subheadings so for that reason you need to give an outline discussing each and everything so my uh, review will cover this one it will cover the simulation work it will review the modeling work it will show, compare this one so therefore you can discuss what is written in section 2.1 what is written in section 3.1 what is written in section 4.1 in that way you can give a brief out outline the order in which uh, you are going to discuss it but it is not compulsory in the case of research paper but in the review you can definitely give the order in which you are going to review uh, then comes the main important part of your review paper is the summary and body of the paper in summary and body of the paper what we do is we try to divide the paper into various subtopics various subtopics we try to evaluate the literature we try to analyze the literature we try to criticize the literature we need to give a uh, accept certain we give a positive comments of certain literature sometimes we interpret it sometimes we compare the literature also so this is the major part of the review paper, so which which is the 70 to 80 percent of review paper is filled in this area the introduction contributes only 10 percent uh, even the conclusion also 10 to 20 percent the major portion of the review paper is the summary and body of the work where we we try to evaluate we try to analyze we try to compare actually and then uh, finally the recommendations is about what what you have uh, concluded actually what you have drawn what are the discussions you are drawn from this paper and then what is the implications of these findings you may have a in, uh, implications of future implication of your findings so that should be highlighted in the conclusions and ultimately the reference uh, reference can be as much as you want but uh, uh, i would follow a rule of uh, maximum 100 references but there are some literature uh, review paper which is exceeding uh, 200 references also it's up to you but uh, uh, but i think 100 references in the past 5 years is more than enough to write a a uh, good review article and uh, review article uh, should have the following plan so you need to outline outline the summary what is the opinion of this paper start Hello. how to start the article summary what is your opinion so in that way this is uh, a normal structure the, i'll go into the detail one by one now uh, how to write a article review this is a question now so for that choosing a current topic very important topic and narrowing down it this is a very very important for example uh, i am just giving a title uh, called as uh, bipv if you just search a bipv the topic is so broad that today you will find at least lakhs of papers on that simply on bipv you simply search you simply search building integrated photovoltaics you search in the google you will find n number of papers in google scholar if you search google scholar you will get it's almost thousands of uh, uh, lakhs of articles we don't know what to write in that it's a, though it's a good topic it's a current topic but we need to narrow down it in bipv what we are going to do let's say we are i'm going to review only the experimental studies done on bipv let us say i want to just review only the uh, only i'm going to review the modeling work on bipv let's say i'm going to review only the economics of bipv 
so in that way we need to narrow down the research actually narrow down the topic and focus only on that area don't do everything and uh, you will get lot of literature and we don't know how to group it actually so this is the main problem with uh, writing a review we get lot of articles we don't know how to narrow down it so we need to narrow specifically to a specific topic actually that is very much important in a review paper and uh, accomplish the literature search you as i said there are today's lot of search engine normally people use uh, google scholar you can directly go to the uh, database science direct and the uh, springer or elsewhere or uh, all uh, this publishers and then you can uh, do the literature search you but just try to follow the same methodology in searching papers if you just follow google scholar use a uh, uh, word bipv with an inverted quotation you are getting lot of paper then try to use the same keywords in the other uh, literature also but once you search in google scholar both are enough because you need not search in other literature actually but in google scholar problem is there are uh, non peer reviewed journal sometimes uh, non indexed journal also you will get therefore uh, it may not be a uh, it, you, you need to segregate which are good papers for you so in that way uh, there are lot of work if you do this uh, literature survey using google scholar then read evaluate classify and make notes now the next step in the paper is you need to read it actually you need to read you need to evaluate you need to classify and you need to make note of all these things so this is a, a next important step we simply collect it but we never read it we never evaluate it we never classify it we never make notes of it actually that is a problem so once you collect the paper start reading it start evaluating it start classifying it how do you group it uh, how, how do you classify this all i'll go into the thing next later on choose only the most relevant articles to your topic so as i said you need to choose only relevant articles sometimes when you simply google on a specific topic you will get n number of articles and you will find very difficult to uh, group it or select it so you just use only the most relevant for your topic if i simply search bipv there are some other unwanted papers inside the word bipv is written therefore that paper also will show us so you should try to uh, skip those only choose only the relevant one compose a preliminary title this is very much important so you need to choose a specific title for your review what title you are going to give that is uh, to be fixed now itself you cannot uh, fix at the last normally you try to uh, fix a title actually prepare an outline that is very important what are the sub headings you are going to give in the in the in the in the paper that has to be given and then plan the content of each paragraph in different section uh, i i tell you what are the content once you write the outline then there are contents actually one interesting content i'll share with you which is wrote by my student uh, that content you can follow later on uh, but normally the content is very important prepare tables figures and concept maps for normally for a review paper tables a comparison table is very very important so we need to compare all the review work we need to compare all the modeling work we need to compare all the experimental work sometimes we compare all the uh, theoretical work so like that there are different different tables being presented so uh, table is very important in the review papers also other than table there uh, that should be adequate number of figures simply you cannot uh, only group only tables and leave it there should be figures also so what are the figures how many figures we are including and all these figures though you can uh, take it from the literature but still you need to cite it you need to modify it you need to improve the figures actually we cannot simply copy a figure and put it and use it in the review article and then draft the body section with your own insights so normally though we collected different uh, literature we compared we evaluated we analyzed but we need to give our own insight it insight in the sense how this article is different from the other article how this paper addressed a specific topic whereas the other topic did it address it so we need to give our own insight into each and every article so that is very much important in the body section draft the conclusion finally after giving all this logic then we can conclude it then at last you can give a introduction because once you read all the paper you know what introduction has to be given once you frame all the body content of your this one then you know what is to be written in the introduction you need not write everything in there now you know what is covered in the content according to the content now you can uh, write the introduction only few things is enough in the introduction draft the abstract finally draft the abstract because abstract conveys a complete summary of the paper therefore it can come at the last and then normally what happen once the tentative paper is ready we try to submit it but it's not the case always we need to revise the draft we need to read the section again and again we need to uh, read the title we need to read the abstract we need to sometimes we need to improve the table we need to improve the figure so you need to revise it so revise in the sense how do you revise it you can give it to your colleague your co-author ask them to uh, ask them ask them to correct it ask them to review this uh, draft so in that way you will get new ideas you get uh, it's a lot of suggestion in which it helps to you 
revise the draft simply once everything is written you feel you are confident that this paper this paper can go for a journal it is not always the case it has to undergo several rounds of revision at our level then only it will be ready for publications then last one is correct the grammar spelling and punctuations is most of the times a paper gets rejected because of the uh, grammatical mistake punctuation spelling mistakes so this has to be totally avoided at the end you need to be proofread you need to avoid silly mistakes grammar mistakes full stops comma all these things are plays a very important role which we need to avoid it and topic selection let us go to the topic selection and uh, first thing is how do you select a topic the topic totally depends on what is your interest now see these days uh, people are having different interests uh, I, i started working on one field now i got different interests so what makes you interest you can select it that but sometimes the topic which you are interested in is already old there is no point in doing that so you need to find out a topic which is current which interests you a lot in that who are the audience see, you write a paper that should be an audience there should be a scientist there should be a researcher who will be interested in it so you need to choose the audience also it is not just uh, uh, choosing the title only based on your interest you need to see how your paper will be useful for others the topic of your audience and the topic which are very very current which are well established they have enough research studies to be put so for that you need to review with you some topics a uh, lot of research papers already come so in that case it's easy to review it uh, so that way you need to select a topic which is current where there is some established amount of data available for example perovskite solar cells people are writing about perovskite solar cells a lot of research already going on people are uh, doing a, a performance analysis they are trying to optimize the material they are improving the cost they are improving the efficiencies in that lot of uh, advancement happening so you can see what is the current trend in that uh one of my students started with the dscc now he is working in uh, a different area called perovskite for his phd so now the, the, the story has already evolved we cannot uh, go and do the dscc again because now that topic is all totally absolute we cannot do on that now it is totally a new area so he is working on a perovskite solar cell so this is well established in that if you start writing a review it is good so in that you need to see also uh, current research uh, what is the efficiency improvement technique in uh, perovskite solar cell so this can be one of the interesting topics so you need to identify a current well established uh, topic for your review or article uh, this is basically an evolving one so now uh, past for example solar drying if i use the word solar drying will be very interested actually uh, the, the solar drying or even uh, drying our cloth it's well known to us former sorry uh, past we were doing it for so many applications in the day to day life we are using the drying actually but over the days the drying uh, the solar uh, drying we are using for so many other purpose now we are for a crop drying for a for a, for many other purposes so the research is totally evolving it's constantly changing you cannot simply relate to this scenario but though there are some reviews which can talk about historical review also you can start from history and then end it today but it's a very lengthy exercise you cannot start from history and you need to start from 19 something in some field would have started very long back you can go from there also but uh, i would say the research is very evolving and I, i we need to restrict ourselves to the current trend rather than focusing on the historical uh, part of the topic choosing the topic that is not too broad not too narrow shorter review if you want to write a very very shorter review just specifically focus on a narrower topic if you want to write a very very lengthy review then you try to focus on a uh, broader topic actually broader means it can be uh, lengthy also it can be of uh, this one it can be wide enough also for a, if you want to write a longer review so th- that way we need to select a topic you need to select uh, now let's go to the title selection why title is very important the first most important part of your paper is the title because the title conveys the article content precisely so we need to be very careful with selecting the title of the paper because it helps the reader whether they want to read the paper or not it helps the reader whether to uh, whether they want to read the paper completely or just throw away by seeing the title so for that reason your title is a very very catchy you can see uh, many of the successful movies are having a very good title if you watch a, a indian movie if somebody is a fan of indian movies you will see a, a title which is very small 
and that movie is very popular among people actually it is not about actors and actor or the story about it but it depends sometimes due to title the movie is super hit so therefore similarly in research papers or review papers the title is very important you need to be very catchy the title should be attractive to the audience it should be helping the readers whether the paper should be read or not so it is the first impression of any any paper therefore the title should be very important and uh, is basically conveys it's a one phrase only the title is simply a one phrase or one uh, sentence so therefore uh, it should convey the it talks about your literature you should be very careful in selecting the uh, title and it search engine indexing database normally they use the title for search actually so therefore we need to be very careful in selecting the title of your research and i am giving some tips for your title and the title should be precise and specific it should be very very precise and specific it should be limited to 5 to 12 words not more than that it cannot be lengthy it cannot be more than 12 words otherwise uh, people will lose interest in the title so it should be limited to 5 to 12 words title should be relevant and specific to the subject it should be very very relevant so you wrote something on pa uh, pv that the title should reflect on that title uh, on the, the, it should reflect on the subject we cannot write something inside and the title can give new, new name it cannot be like that the title should be relevant and it should be relevant to your content of your paper also and normally the title is a single phrase it's normally a single phrase it cannot be two phrase it cannot be two sentences it should be a only only single phrase it should not be a combination of sentences also normally abbreviations is avoided for example if i write uh, f t i r if i write uh, uh, this kind of things in the title uh, it is not acceptable we cannot write uh, i cannot write simply bipv also in the title it should be building integrated photovoltaics so like that so we should try to avoid the abbreviations in the title do not use jargon or very complex words in the title also this is very difficult which we should avoid i am giving you some few uh, interesting titles uh, which you will like it actually uh, the let us go in this uh, title one by one i i just take uh, water for two minutes so if you see this uh, titles you will you will find uh, some few interesting titles for you an overview of macro algae as a bioresource so you can see uh, what is uh, written how many words you can count it here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 so the range i told you it should be 5 to 5 to 12 words would be good enough it should not be too lengthy if it is too lengthy it's very difficult the paper may not get citation the paper people may not be willing to read also so the title should be short and sweet and you need not write as a review uh, like that it can start like that an overview an overview in the sense you are giving uh, everything about that particular topic for example the first topic and overview of marine macro algae as a bioresource this is the title and this title talks about overview over in the sense it is going to cover everything about this marine macro algae everything about it everything about it as a bioresource clearly written as a bioresource means this title is going to cover something about marine macro algae and uh, as a fuel as a resource as a biological resources so definitely accordingly this paper will have so many subheadings and related to it it may cover how it is being used as a fuel it may cover how it is being used as a uh, uh, food supplement or something like that so it covers everything an overview of marine algae and this is and then comes another title an overview of higher alcohol and biodiesel as alternate fuels in engine an overview again this topic deals with the alcohol based fuels alcohol based fuels so we use the word higher alcohol and uh, it includes all the other biodiesel as an alternate fuels in engines so this is also an overview sometimes the overview will cover everything it may include the performance it may include uh, characterization of the fuel sometimes if we talk about uh, the different fuel production process all these things so, but but this gives an idea a picture about higher alcohol how how this alcohol is uh, being produced or how it is used in the engine engine testing and all so this this title is okay very interesting it's it's 12 words the restriction uh, it's 12 words so is uh, beyond the 12 words uh, the title will be too lengthy too clumsy and uh, this paper may not uh, be referred actually so we need to be careful not more than uh, 12 words 
now very very short interesting title i'll give you sometimes uh, the, the short title gets more citation frankly speaking if you keep your title very very small uh, these days authors are uh, uh, like to see when you google search you simply search two words or three words you are you are not going to put the big lengthy phrase in search engine so therefore when you write a small two words or three word title that will get a more search that will get more citation also therefore the article should be the article title should be very very small so for example this title solar pv tree design a review just see uh, it's clearly written it talks about solar pv tree uh, solar photovoltaic tree and its design basically it's going to discuss about the solar photovoltaic uh, uh, tree design the, what are the new designs in the pv and then it is going to review only that so indirectly we are conveying that it's a review about this particular uh, tree designs so it's somewhat a very catchy title then go to this title it's a very interesting one airport based photovoltaic applications we never wrote it is it is a review so it is now uh, the journal itself is called as progress in photovoltaics they normally publish what is the recent trend in the pv area so therefore uh, uh, in the title sometimes a word review a word overview uh, this need not come also it need not come for example this title we never wrote it's a review it is written simply airport based photovoltaic applications it is understood that we are going to discuss the airport based pv systems how we are applying what are the different uh, uh, ways of applying all these things so in that way uh, the review paper can be like this also review paper title can be like this it need not be a, a word review and overview a state of art sometimes we can write state of art also nothing wrong with that uh, so in that way it's a phrase with some limitation of words the limitation of words as i said it should be 5 to 12 not more than 5 to 15 also in some extent not more than that uh, some more title uh, floating photovoltaic power plant review so this you see it talks about floating power plant uh, concept but uh, but we didn't specify what we are going to review inside but inside you will see the content it talks about design it talks about performance analysis it talks about uh, software used for simulation it talks about environmental impact of floating solar it talks about standards in floating solar so several aspects were uh, coming into it so in this uh, this paper is floating solar power plant review that's all you see it's how uh, simply the title is written then comes uh, a very interesting title recent improvements in dye sensitized solar cell Uh, a review i think uh, one of my student is also attending the session mr vipin raj uh, uh, i am very grateful to him because this paper is getting almost uh, uh, my highly cited paper is this paper only and uh, uh, my past my present student is currently with uh, uh, nus and he is doing a research in a new field but of course this paper uh he, as a team we wrote and his colleague uh, elsa john is also part of it and myself as a supervisor part of this work and i will show i am going to explain this particular paper only the content how to draft and all so this one talks about what are the recent improvements in it because this uh, uh talk, this dye sensitized at that time it was new it's also almost 5 years back we wrote this paper now dye sensitized as evolved and uh, even my, these uh, my past students are working on a different area than this they are not working on this particular topic now they are working on uh, some other topic or like perovskite solar system or the topic has evolved already so therefore no point in uh, writing on uh, dye sensitized solar cell at this moment but still there are some studies which people have not covered it in that so that, that can be written for example uh, there are some modeling aspects of dye sensitized solar cell modeling of the uh, this uh, this one so he's already started doing on that work so the, the, these uh, improvements in dye sensitized solar cell at that time it was uh, the performance was evolving there were new studies reporting that it has reached the efficiency of 15% or 20% the lab scale efficiency was very high like the people were projecting so then we thought why don't we review only the improvement in the designs what is the improvement in the performance so for that for that purpose we wrote this uh, work and we'll discuss this and detail about this work later on so now you got an idea about how to select the title uh, so the title should be very very uh, specific it should convey the content of your work it should be short and sweet it should not be too lengthy so that is what i, I gave this title for your understanding how it should look and some other title also can be there sometimes a policy paper for example this title renewable energy in southeast asia policies and recommendations 
so we 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 are just discussing when you know about renewable energy it is being researched a lot so if simply i write uh, about renewable energy and all what people are going to do nobody is going to see that is already what are what are the concepts in renewable energy everybody know how solar pv is working how solar csp is working how wind energy is working what is the uh, wind energy types everybody knows that if i write only renewable energy review uh, nobody is there to read and the paper cannot be accepted because uh, there is our technology is already known but what is the new things in that technology that we can write of course that we can write but this uh, study is mostly a policy based uh, study Uh, what it was done is uh, southeast asian countries the, this research is specifically focused on southeast asian countries around 10 countries in southeast asia we were just discussing what is the policies in each countries what is the policy in myanmar what is the policy in malaysia what is the policy in singapore what is the policy in thailand so we just critically we were discussing the policies and we are giving recommendations about how uh, we can grow this uh, how the renewable energy can uh, can flourish in the southeast asian countries and that way this review was done and then uh, this is another recent review uh, it is also very interesting um, uh, within couple of years uh, within one year it has got good number of citation net zero building designs in hot and humid climate see for example this title net zero building design see if you say green building there are lot of green buildings i can simply search green building and write paper but it it will not uh, help us to write a review paper let's say we specifically write for a climatic condition green building in a hot and composite climate green building in a cold climate green building in a specific condition then there is works to narrow down a topic and we can write uh, we can write very clearly therefore this though i can write a similar topic net zero energy building designs on another another field also i can write nothing wrong with that net zero building designs in composite climate i can take a composite climate i can review only those designs so because that uh, net zero building design it that totally depends on the local climatic conditions see for example to, uh, in malaysia when you design a building that may be good enough for this climatic condition the same building when i put it in the european country that building may not be green building that may be building may not be net zero building so therefore uh, the net zero building concepts is applied for different uh, different conditions actually different climates therefore we can write a review paper for each conditions actually and we gave a heading that state of art state of art means what is the current trend in the research what is the present status and later on we can give a future trends also what is the present status sometimes what are the challenges what are the opportunities sometimes a swot analysis so like this you can give a different different uh, interesting uh, titles for your uh, for your review work so this is about uh, title selection how to select a title and how to uh, make it uh, interest for the audience to read uh, read your paper and also always select the title which is very current actually not the old one then comes abstract in abstract we normally summarize the whole work which is about 150 200 words and we uh, and we define the problem we def uh, what method was used it is basically the abstract is for common for review and research paper Uh, we need to define the problem we need to give the method you need to discuss the results you need to con conclude see the entire summary of the paper will coming in the abstract how did you do it what is the problem what is the background information what is the methodology used what is the results of your paper what is the conclusion what is the future scope everything is coming in 150 words so therefore each and every word of your abstract is very important actually so uh, i'll give a sample abstract also for your understanding in the next slide and uh, some people they just simply read the abstract not only audience even reviewer even the editor they simply read the abstract and they will select whether to um, take this paper for review or not by seeing the abstract by seeing the title by seeing the abstract some paper getting rejected some paper is getting to the next stage of review so therefore abstract is should be very very conscious how you maximize this uh, uh, the story within this words 150 to, to very especially you have to tell the stories in 150 words i asked you to tell a story about yourself in 150 words it should be very clear i i want to know about you but within this word then only it's good now likewise you need to uh, restrict your abstract together the title and abstract should stand on their own so this is very important the title should stand on itself the abstract should stand on its itself so therefore uh, these two are very important part of uh, any review paper and this is an example abstract this i taken from another resource uh i just give an example i a uh, lot of abstract is there but i thought this abstract is very interesting uh first sentence gives the 
importance of the study and introduction. For example, performance testing of automotive brake involves determination of stopping time, distance, and deceleration level. This is about importance and background of uh, work. And then uh, talks about the uh, methodology, the braking performance of an automobile is required to be ensured for various surfaces like all these things. And then it talks about this particular article, what this article is discussing. This article presents the methodology used for automotive braking system for two wheelers. Then it gives about the contribution of this review paper. The main contribution of this review lies in comparative study of three different braking standards, Indian standards, federal motor vehicle standards and European standards. It's basically trying to review a three type of standards in this uh, paper. So th this is the main contribution of that particular work. And then finally, what is the usefulness of your research? What is the, how, who is going to use this work? Whether it is useful for a researcher, whether it is useful for somebody, whether it is useful for scientists or whether it is useful for design engineers. So we need to clearly state who, who will be the, uh, who will get benefit out of the study. Who, where people can apply it. So that is the implication of the research. So this is about the policy makers and uh, this study was useful for the policy makers. Of course, it may not be for the policy makers. It may be for a future scientist or a future engineers or designers. For them also some research would be useful. So in that way, who is getting benefited of your research? That should come under the last uh, uh, sentence of the abstract. So basically, this is the uh, abstract. You should have the introduction. It should have methodology. It should have the main contribution of your work. And then finally, the implication of your research. Mm, I think uh, we need to be fast. We are uh, running out of time. Uh, so I hope you, all of you are patiently listening. Uh, but I'll try my best is uh, to do it. And we uh, definitely will, will like to interact with you at the uh, end in another 10 15 minutes will interact uh, the search engine optimization tool these days uh, many of the search engine optimization tool they search only title abstract and keywords therefore in a review paper these three are more important than anything anything else than the content than the conclusion the title should be current then the abstract should be concise and the keywords should be uh, very important. The keywords can come from the abstract also. Try to avoid the keywords from the title, but the, the keywords can come from the abstract. Basically, in the abstract, certain words may be repeating in the abstract. Whichever words is repeating in the abstract, that can come under the keywords. Therefore, you need to be you need to be very careful in selecting the title. You need to be very careful in the abstract, and you need to be very careful in selecting the keywords. The other things are secondary actually in uh, in the review because the review is getting searched only with this uh, three things uh, as i already pointed out that the title should be clear it should be a key phrase it should not be a lengthy uh, title trying to avoid humorous titles there are some examples where the titles are funny or humorous so we need to avoid such humorous or funny title and keywords are very important and uh, normally four to six keywords are used and sometimes the keyword, repeat them three to four times throughout the abstract. Sometimes the keywords which you are using can come inside the abstract at least two to three times so that uh, the search engine tool will uh, try to search your uh, abstract. So therefore, you can repeat certain words in the abstract actually. And keywords around, uh, there is no norms, but normally four to six is a standard. But I prefer uh, writing, uh, writing the odd numbers. Basically, you write three or five. Don't go for even numbers four or six. Uh, there is some rule behind it, but you try to restrict with five keywords or phrases in the keywords, including those you repeated in the abstract. You can select the keywords from the phrases also, and then uh, provide additional relevant keywords for those keywords related to your title. Related to your title, use headings for various sections of your article. Tip off the search engine to the structure and content of your article. Sometimes your subheadings also used by search engine. You can use uh, subheadings from your uh, abstract as well. So this is what I want to tell you because this plays a very important role whether the paper will come in the search engine, engine or not. Uh, introduction, uh, this is uh, about the background of your article. What is the purpose of this article? Why did you choose to write this article? Whether this article is highly relevant to the present scenario and uh, what is the key point in this research, these are all we have to give. So therefore, the, the, the your paper should address all these questions. What is the purpose of writing it? What is the background behind this article? Uh, who will be benefited, the audience? So uh, why it is relevant to in today's context? So these are all the things which we should address in the uh, introduction. 
and uh, basically the introduction should st state the background actually it should state the background it should give a motivation for the research why you are doing this review or research and you should give the what is the problem being investigated and uh, what are the questions you are answering in your paper basically such questions and you should clearly tell how this review is different from the past published review in the in the introduction itself so because there may be as i said uh, if i write bitv lot of papers already there so we need to tell clearly what you are uh, how you are different from the previous uh, review articles or previous research articles so you need to clearly identify the difference in it and explain what other findings if uh, you are whether you are challenging or extending sometimes you may uh, disagree with certain other papers you may extend the already existing work so you, therefore you need to explain it how uh, this work is extension of an existing paper so you can uh, genuinely tell it for example you uh, uh, one of the paper was on dyson space solar cell it was written by so and so uh, it is the mere extension of that work and there we are covering certain other topic which are not covered by the researcher it can be an extension of already existing research that can be done definitely and it, normally the weightage for introduction is only 10 to 20 percent for the entire review paper so there so there is no point in focusing much on the introductory part as it contributes only 10 to 20 percent of the portion and then comes the main text of the review article the main text is methodological approaches for example uh, for example a review paper uh, the, we, we write in a different way uh, for example, methodological approaches. People use different methods for their research. People are doing research only with experimentation. People are doing research only with simulation activity. Even there are people who are doing research only with uh, with uh, theoretical models or theoretical mathematical equations and all. So therefore, we need to find out what methodology was used. Whether they used experimental method, whether they used the simulation method, whether they used a theoretical model. For example, I said a simple example: BIPV. If I use BIPV. We can review simply experimental works on BIPV. We can review the simulation papers on BIPV. We can review the mathematical modeling of BIPV. We can review the economics of BIPV. We can review like that. You can write any number of reviews only with the with the with the different methodology used in this. Different designs of BIPV like that. So you need to choose what methodology was approached and what methodology we are going to cover in this paper. And you can cover sometimes concepts also. It, it, it need not be a specific methodology. It can be a different concepts. Concepts means just ideas. You can review only all the ideas in a specific field. For example, uh, I gave a, a title on solar PV tree design a review. At that time, nobody done research on the solar PV tree. There was no uh, research performance evaluation, no theoretical model on it, no simulation paper on that. So simply we were just reviewing all the existing ideas. We were just reviewing this uh, solar tree can be like this, solar tree can be trapezoidal, solar tree can be like this. So we were just reviewing all the concepts, all the ideas existing in the in the literature. So in that way also a review paper can be structured. It can be based on pure ideas. And the review paper should argue or disagree with certain papers. So you can say certain work agreed that the, the efficiency is increasing certain uh, Certain uh, researchers said the efficiency of certain system is decreasing with increase in temperature, something like that. Sometimes some researchers contradict each other. So you need to tell which are the literature agreed upon a particular concept, which are the literature which disagreed on a concept. So that it should uh, uh, discuss. It should summarize and evaluate the content. Basically, it should summarize. As I said, you need to give a heading by heading. You need to summarize and you need to evaluate the content. And it should follow a chronological order, a sequence. It should have a sequence. It should have a story. It should not be mixed and, and confused. Actually, it should not confuse the audience. It should have a, a very like a storytelling. You should come with a chronological order. And normally, it's uh, the major portion of a review is the body. That is seventy to ninety percent uh, uh, comes in this uh, comes in this part. So we need to be very careful in organizing the content of this. Uh, uh, content of this so you should take more pains in doing this part of the review article so now i'm giving an example of uh, this paper uh, see because this is very close to my heart and uh, uh, this was done by my student uh, vipin raj recent improvements in dye sensitized solar cells uh, and uh, this is my most cited paper so very sentimental to this paper that's why i chose this an example a lot of several other examples are there but i chose this because uh, it's very neatly structured so at that time 
you can see the content this side uh, i'm just giving an outline how a research paper should look what are the outline of a research outline of a review paper you can see an abstract first abstract i clearly told it is a summary of the uh, summary of the whole paper keywords six to four, four to six keywords i'll show you the keywords what was used and then it was having an introduction about the background of this dyson dye solar cell and then we discussed how dssc is working what is the working of the dyson dye solar cells and normally the dyson dye solar cell has got different components in it actually different components it is made up of a photo anode it is made up of a sensitizers it made up of electrolyte it is it is having another component called counter electrode so what we did is each and every component we try to review what are the improvements in it so the title uh, the main aspects of the title is improvements only so what are the reasons improvement in disensitized solar cell since the disensitized solar cell has having four different uh, components we try to review each and every component improvements actually what is the improvement in the photon what is the improvements in the sensitizer what is the improvement in electrolyte what is the improvement in the counter electrode so in that way this research focused on all these uh, uh, improvements we discussed what are the materials used in photo anode what is the how did you characterize the photo anode what is the efficiency when you use this particular photo anode then when we use a dye sensitizer the dye the sensitizer can come from a biological source or it can come from chemical source or something like that so what are the biological sources what are the chemical sources being used and that what is the efficiency in each uh, when you use the different sensitizer what are the improvements so like this for each and every um, every component of the dssc we were systematically reviewing there was a table for each uh, component photo anode we wrote one component for uh, for a sensitizer we wrote a table for a electrolyte we wrote a table for a counter electrode we wrote a table we compared it we illustrated and we argued why the uh, why we the organic is better than the inorganic why this electrolyte is better than that electrolyte it's not just giving a table later on we were arguing and we are commenting and we are discussing this one uh, so in that way this uh, was very neatly structured and there were other improvements also the other than that there are some other uh, general uh, suggestions and how these improvements are affecting the performance of dssc in terms of fill factor because the performance of dssc is measured with the help of fill factor so we had a small discussion on fill factor aspect and then the critical uh, discussion about all these uh, literature general discussion and the scope for future research was also given so later on now this story has evolved further a lot of new things has happened at that time uh, the scope was uh, the, there was a different scope and there it was uh, uh, gone in that direction and then conclusion was written so this is how we structured this uh, uh, particular uh, review and this is a logic is now i am writing one interesting paper on uh, uh, impact of covid 19 on global economy energy and environment this is something suddenly one night i was sleepless and by seeing this covid 19 uh, problem i my mind was scratching then uh, immediately this uh, uh, content suddenly came to my mind first is introduction overview of pandemic and present situation what is the overview of covid 19 what is the problem with this uh, with this covid 19 how this is affecting the oil prices how this is affecting the global energy consumption and production how this is affecting the global economy how this is affecting the environment how it is affecting the renewable energy growth and penetration and what are the challenges after this covid 19 in the energy sector and some policy recommendations future outlook concluding remarks and references this one day uh, it was scratching in my mind and i was looking for a collaborator then immediately my friends i contacted them and asked them can you help me in writing this portion and then quickly uh, we drafted uh, each one of us my colleague drafted on this i i drafted something on this and another colleague drafted on this and we clubbed together now some story has come so it is about a summit actually this 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 idea came just only in one night actually one whole night i was sleepless and then i thought why don't we write something on covid 19 on its and its impact on this one so now the manuscript is ready so basically your content is very important whenever you write a review or article something like that you, you have to frame the content once the frame the content is done then it's easy to collect relevant material and get put inside each uh, each uh, body actually so this is very uh, important then now i ask my student to work on uh, similarly impact on aviation sector impact on renewable energy sector specifically impact on automobile sector like that you can you can come up with your own ideas on this topic itself it's a current trend and a lot of uh, review articles can be written uh, on this uh, specific uh, title 
and uh, i just to go very fast because uh, running out of time only 10 15 minutes is there so uh, citations normally there are uh, two types integral uh, one and non integral normally integral means it is part of the sentence you can cite like this release 2001 argues that two thousand students like this or non integral can be at the end of the manuscript at the end it means the sentence is finishing and then you can cite it it can be integral part of the manuscript or it can be non integral part of the manuscript and we'll finally come to the conclusion normally conclusion is the selling point of your research this is your last chance to highlight that whether this manuscript is important how how it is going to benefit the audience what is the major findings of that therefore equally important is the conclusion this is your last chance to highlight your work therefore give more importance to it it should be free from uh, plagiarism not even a single word should be copied from other resources all the points in the conclusion should be your own point it should be very very uh, neat and how the research has evolved what is the new addition you are given what is the implication of the research findings normally it is around 5 to 10 percent of the text so as i said introduction it's 10 percent the body is only mostly 80 to 90 percent and finally conclusion is only 10 percent in the review article and basically the focus was on the review article therefore i highlighted all this thing and editing proofreading is ultimately very important because sometimes you cannot simply uh, submit once it's half done you want to immediately publish it cannot done so it has to review it has to undergo editing proofreading give it to your friends give it to your colleagues uh, give it to your well wisher uh, they will help you in editing drafting sometimes we feel whatever we wrote is correct whatever we feel is well, can be published but it is not all the case on a third person night the story will be totally different so therefore you need to give for proofreading and editing and all so this is a final checklist of a uh, uh, review article and what are the major or shortcoming of the review article is vagueness sometimes we give inappropriate content and we just uh, limit ourselves sometimes insufficient information is given irrelevant material is being added sometimes we omit the contrasting view of some authors see you need not follow everybody is telling the same thing you should not follow that sometimes contrasting views also should be discussed therefore it should not uh, you should also discuss the other contrasting views also you should uh, not omit the reason for that. these are some of the shortcomings we should be sure that remove it references try to acknowledge everything and uh, avoid references that are difficult to find and avoid the reference which are uh, non index journal and try to cite only the related manuscripts don't cite the papers which are not related to your work referencing style normally we follow to one harvard and vancouver it is one is the author style another one we call it as a numbering style this one arranged by based on author uh, alphabetical order the other one is based on numbering and uh, article submission i'll just skip uh, these all you know how to submit an article out of this one uh, this is the last slide so this uh, how to select a journal these days there are a lot of tools in selecting a journal uh, for that uh, you can use this matching manuscript in uh, web of science this is a recent uh, uh, tool which is available in this link you just click this link it will it will go to uh, some source and uh, you can put your abstract you can match your uh, you can for example you can match the manuscript you can match uh, you need to create an account and then you can match your abstract and title and it will suggest the web of science uh, journal so in that way you can you can do this uh, manuscript matching manuscript and find the relevant journal uh, which you can target actually and also you can use the journal finder tool but sometimes i find uh, the journal is suggesting irrelevant uh, journal for submission elsewhere journal finder you can use but my past experience many of the journals are irrelevant but you can select the top uh, four or five which will show the which will show green color which is matching uh, one that one you can choose and try Springer also has come up with a suggester. Billy also has given a suggester. And last one, I can we can also use a Scopus search one. You just click the Scopus link and then put the title inside, and you, you can see the uh, different uh, journals which it's publishing. So that way, we can select a journal for submitting the paper. Uh, so, but the most interesting one is this one. You can try this one at your uh, home and see which journal. I'm mean, normally what I do, I try to do all this thing and then find one journal for submission in that way we try to do or sometimes i fix the journal and we write the paper for example i will fix that this paper should go to rscr only this paper should go to progress in photovoltaics only this paper should go to journal of uh, energy storage only so like that we fix a, a journal and then we write paper sometimes review paper is not accepted in all journals therefore you should uh, try to find out the suitable journal for your review paper 
so now this is my current profile and i give a small exercise for you later on you, if you find time you can do it uh, uh, just find out five suitable ways in which you can improve your title you can improve your abstract and you can improve your content the flow of ideas and the wording of particular paragraph i just want some five ways of improving all these uh, things uh, maybe you can uh, try to do as an exercise and uh, contact us in future